Hello, welcome back to How to RV. I am Jason, and today I wanted to talk about hooking up your gray tank and your black tank at the next campground when you have full hookups. Now, normally I talk about all the kinds of things that I wanna show you, but in this case, I actually have a question for all of you out there as well. Now, what I mean by that is that the way I hook mine up and how I use mine now, now that I have a tankless water heater, I'm curious of how you do yours. I can take a lot longer showers, meaning I use a lot more water. And because of that, I am filling up my gray water tank a lot faster than I used to. And at the last couple of campgrounds, because I do use so much water, I've actually been leaving my gray tank valve open, letting the tank empty itself the whole time I'm there. Now, I know I've said in other videos that you need to leave them closed and only to open them when you want to flush your black tank so that you have some water to flush out that hose. Now, because doing this type of setup, this is where you come in. I want y'all's opinions on how you think this should operate. So my thought process behind the whole thing is that if I need the gray water to flush out the hose because I'm gonna empty my black tank, then all I gotta do is shut the valve and let the tank fill up right before I go and flush out the black tank. Using this thought process has worked out very good for me in the last couple of campgrounds, but I'm not necessarily sure that this is the right thing to do. If I'm gonna be using my gray tank to not only take showers, but to wash dishes and everything like that, then that means that I am most likely pushing things down through the sink that contain some things like grease and other food materials and stuff like that into the gray tank. And because of that, if I put chemicals in the gray tank water and that is there to break all that stuff up and I keep the tank empty, then I may not have the chemicals sitting there long enough to be able to flush out the tank, get all that stuff out and clean the sensors. Now, like I said, I've been doing this at the last couple of campgrounds and it's been working out fine for me. The sensors have been okay. The tank hasn't been making any funny smells or anything like that. But I am curious, if this was your rig and you had this same setup, how would you operate yours? Would you go ahead and keep the valve closed so that the tank can fill up and drain it only as needed? Or would you go ahead and do like I'm doing and let the valve stay open and then close the valve, let the tank fill up and do all the flush out that you need to do as you need to do it? I don't know, you let me know down in the comments below on what you think you would do. Like I said before, I've been doing this in the last couple of campgrounds and I haven't had any issues just yet, but doesn't mean that I'm not getting ready to cause one that I'm not necessarily aware of. And the reason that I wanted to reach out to all of you out there is because I've been looking at the comments that y'all been leaving and y'all have left some really good information on some of the previous videos. And speaking of that, let's go ahead and get into the comments. So this first comment comes from Sonics VT04 off the video titled, Your RV Thermostat Sucks. And they say, I've had two rigs now and both have had the lackluster Dometic thermostat. Love to hear that there's an option to change two. Now for all of y'all out there, if y'all haven't gone back and seen that video yet, you really need to check that out because there's a digital thermostat out there that may just work wonders for your RV. And Sonics VT04, if you get this thermostat and you get it installed inside of your rig, I would love for you to send me an email. Let me know what you think about it and how it's worked out for your RV. And for the next comment, this one came off a video titled RV Water Pump Explained 2021 Sure Flow Water Pump. And the comment came from Mike Parker saying, nice comprehensive video on the operation function and troubleshooting tips. One thing to add, if you do not regularly utilize a water pump, like hooked up to city water all the time, you need to exercise the water pump to exercise the pressure regulating valve. We boondock a lot, so it gets exercised a lot. In order to fix this, you have to disassemble the pump and release it. Baffled us once. Thanks for the excellent 411. Now this is exactly what I'm talking about. There is a comment here with somebody that gave me some information of something that I didn't really think about, and it was a benefit to all of us out here in the RV world. And that's exactly my point previously in the video is I'm asking you out there to leave some comments down below on what you think you would do with your gray water and black water tanks. Now for this next comment, it comes off of the video titled Travel Trailer Stabilize and Explain. Now, before I get into reading the comment who it's by, I wanted to tell you, if you're out there camping, I want you to pay close attention to this here comment because you could be doing damage to your RV and not even know that you're doing it. All right, now this next comment comes from Gregory Smith saying, great video. One tip I'd like to offer is check the pressure you have on the stabilizers during your stay. Throughout my recent trip, it seems that the ground wasn't rock solid and I found some had a lot of pressure on them and others were loose. On pack up day, one stand was so tight it slightly bent the adjuster screw and one had no pressure. I now make it a point to check each one each morning. 
Now, Gregory, I wanna say thank you very much for leaving this comment out there for everybody to read. Not every time that you go out camping is the ground gonna be so solid that your rig is not gonna move. Like Gregory says here, if your RV does tend to settle a little bit while you're out camping, then it could put undue stress on the stabilizers and cause issues. Now it's funny, but not funny that you put this comment on this video because I had another video right over here that happened to me well after I made this video that you put a comment on talking about that same very thing. And if any of you out there wanna see that video, I'll leave it down in the description below. And again, comments like these are amazing because it gives us all something to think about and to reassure ourselves that we're not out there alone and that we could share our experiences with others out there as well through videos like this and leaving comments. So until the next time that we get back together, keep your tanks clean, empty them when you need to, and God bless.